Hi, and welcome to our A-Level PE talk. I am Miss Wallace. I am head of PE here at Rugby High School. This is going to be a real quick run through of kind of the topics that you're going to cover, what we study within those topics, um, the breakdown of the course, and hopefully it's going to be something that you're really interested in studying and we would love to have you with us. So the breakdown of our course is 70% theory. Uh, it's based over two written exams. Component three is your practical performance in which you can be assessed as a performer or as a coach of others, and that's worth 15%. And then component four is also 15%, and that's a personal development programme, of which I'll give more details later on in the talk. So one of the topics that we study is applied anatomy and physiology. Here we'll be looking at the musculoskeletal system, cardiorespiratory system, our neuromuscular system, and also our energy systems. For each of these, it's a case of looking at the structures, the physiology, the processes that take place, and then the adaptations that happen to these systems as a result of training and the impact then that that has on our sporting performance. So in exercise physiology, we look at diet and nutrition and how we can manipulate diets, what supplements we can use and how athletes will get the optimal weight in order of getting the best performance out of their sport. We look at different training methods, testing methods, technology that we can use to monitor fitness um, and all the principles around that. Then we look at injury and rehab, so classification of injuries, uh, preventative methods and the processes of rehabilitation that athletes have to go through. Movement analysis is about motion, so it's uh, looking at sporting context, the moment of inertia, forces that we can apply, types of spin, effects of flight, and how that will impact on performance. Skill acquisition is about all the learning theories. So how do you pick up the skills that you know? How did you learn them? What method did your coach um, take that helped you to learn those skills in the most effective environment? What type of practices, guidance and feedback did they use? We also look at the memory model. So we understand then how we produce skills by recalling them from our long-term memory and the processes that we have to go through using reinforcement in order to get them there. Sport and society. Uh, so here we look at the governing bodies in sport, whether they are national or international, the impacts of the modern Olympics and the ideals. We look at ethics and deviance in sport. So um, use of drugs, match fixing, bungs, what the responses of those governing bodies are in order to try and combat it and what are the more contemporary forms of deviance that we are seeing these days. We also look at the media impact of sport and performers. So how do um, the coverage that the media give to a sport provide it with advantages and disadvantages in comparison to others? How does that impact on the uptake of those sports and how many people are playing them right from a grassroots level through to looking at talent, talent identification, the development routes of sports, and how we can then produce elite athletes. Sports psychology, here we look at personalities in sport. So if you are extrovert or ex introvert, how is that likely to impact your performance? How is it likely to impact what sport you choose to do? We look at attitudes. So do people say, I lost because I didn't play well, or do they say, oh, I lost because they were better on the day? What do they attribute to success and failure? We look at things like aggression versus assertion and how that can benefit performers or how it might end up seeing them in a bit of a sticky situation and therefore what that then might do to their confidence, to their arousal levels and how that will impact on performance. Component three, so this is your practical assessment. So you have one sport that you are marked out of 44. There is a set activity list, so you can only submit uh, a sport that is used on that list by the exam board. And they are the same list for each exam board, so that doesn't matter which one we do. Um, assessment can take place at any point in the course. So if you know that you're going to be um, skiing over the new year one time, you can record yourself produce your footage, we can assess that, and then that's part of the course is then done and you can focus on the theory. The sport list that you can see, there's quite, quite a variety. Um, there are some sort of rules within, so for example, football cannot be a five-a-side or it can't be futsal, it has to be full 11-a-side games. 
but then the list is there that you can check through and see what would suit you best. The way it's marked is banded into five different bands. So that divides the marks between the both and the language just kind of changes in each band as to whether you are competent, basic, good, very good or outstanding at the skills. What is most important though at A-level in comparison to if you've done GCSE PE is that you are assessed in your application. So we're not looking at skills in isolation in drills, we're looking at skills as a whole and how you apply them in a competitive context. Component four is your performance development program. So you have to analyze a performance, you have to analyze areas of fitness, decide then on a physiological component and a tactical or technical component that needs improving within that performance and design and implement a program that's then based around improving that and retesting at the end to see if it has worked. Subjects that complement PE would be psychology, biology, physics, English language. Um, okay, thanks for listening. So that was our whistle stop tour of A-level PE. If you do have any more questions, please don't hesitate to email me at n.wallace at rugbyhighschool.co.uk. Thank you.